Sometimes you need a lot of gear and a lot of things to build stuff. And buying it from China can be a little bit complicated when you live in Sweden. And the reason for that is that you need to pay an extra fee for every package delivered. Um, the customs and everything, that's normal, uh, you get that. But the extra fee is actually, in many cases, more expensive than the gear itself. Makes it cheaper to buy it from Sweden directly. Doing that, I generally try to collect everything together and buy a lot of stuff from one vendor at one time. Doing that gives me a big box of gear when it arrives. And now I have three big boxes here. Two of them totally filled up with gear. And let's go through them and see what is in them and see what we can do. All links to the gear can be found down below. Some process of that you buy from ends up to my channel and I do appreciate it. So let's take a look at the boxes and see what we have inside of them. First box here is with mix gear. This one here is only with son of gear. And here we have a couple of more mixed gear. So let's start with the first one. So let's start with the screen I have here. This is a Nexteon display. Uh, this display itself, you build up the graphical user interface on your computer visually and then assign things to it. You talk to the display via the serial port. You can easily build graphical interfaces to control stuff. Like my heating system, I even have this to show data from my Batrium BMS. So this is really, really neat and they come in all different sizes from, I think it is two and a half inch up to seven inch. And I do recommend them. Links for this can be found down below. Next thing is even more serial adapters. You can never have enough serial adapters. Those ones are easy to work with. Uh, I like this type here because you can switch between 5 volt and 3.3 volt, making it possible to program almost anything you have in mind. I also bought a couple of ones with the wire attaching directly to the USB port with those here. They are only for 5 volt in this case. They are very neat to handle as well. Next up, we have this relay board. You can never have enough relays because this one attaches easily to your Arduino or ESP, making it possible to switch stuff on and off. You can find these all from one relay up to 5, 10, 24 or even 48 relays in once. Link down below. Something that I think you cannot have enough of is microcontrollers and therefore I bought some more. On the front here we will see the ESP. 8266 one of my favorite boards because it's versatile easy to use and simple this one here is very easy to use in terms of that it comes with a vera board like this you can add uh, anything you want i like the node mcu boards because they just work out of nothing they are very cheap as well so check them out I use them for my heating system for all my monitoring nodes for temperature humidity I even use them com to communicate with energy meters or my inverters itself. So they go in handy. And of course, more MCUs. What we have here, let's open, is the ESP12. This basically only have two IOs enabled. It's smaller, 
and even easier to uh, work with, but it is the same like the ESP8266 except for the memory. This one here uses one meg of RAM and it's enough to work with the types that I'm using down below. So if you need those, they cost nothing and you can use them like in the projects I had before. Working with ESPs, you need a lot of sensors as well. Here is the GI49. This is a Lux based sensor for your ESP. They are really, really nifty. They are small to work with and cost nearly nothing and are perfect if you want to sense a light in a room or light in a light bulb or whatever you have it for. I do recommend them highly. Next up is jumpers. Jumpers is something you need. You need a lot of them. Working with the ESP8266 or any other controller, these are really good to have because you can wire things up really quickly, easily and just go ahead. Same goes with the male to male, male to female and female to female. I bought the ones that are a little bit softer and I like them a lot. Next ones in the sensors here are the SHT21. Uh, it also comes under different names. This is basically a small temperature and humidity sensor. It's talking I square C and it just works out of the box. I always use domes along with the light sensor that I showed you earlier. So I do recommend a couple of those because they're really easy to integrate. Working with wires or cables like the jumpers that you saw before. I here have bought female and male headers with the plastic connector. Doing that makes it possible for me to build my own jumper wire if needed in longer schemes and I can use silicone wires instead. Links below for this, it costs nearly nothing. But to be able to use this you need tools. Two tools that I recommend working with wires is those two here. This one here is easy to use, have a scale and works with most small scale to larger scale wires to strip them off. So I really like this one. To crimp stuff I do like this tool here because this one can crimp down to the smallest 0.7 millimeter crimps. This one works really great alongside with those here. Next up is another microcontroller. This is the ESP32 and it's bundled with a small small camera. I have never tried the ESP32 with a camera before so this will be a really interesting project to build a small webcam server, monitoring server or whatever you want it to. So let's stay tuned for that in another episode. Currently I have done a lot of sensors and here's even more sensors. Uh, here's even more and here's even more. I bought almost 100 PIR sensors that can sense motion. My plan is to have one hub in each room or two with PIR sensor, temperature, humidity and light. And to do that I need a lot of sensors. It was so cheap to buy them so I bought plenty of them. Stay tuned for that and if you haven't watched I have older videos where I build stuff like this. The Hylink AC to DC adapters I would say are really good and cheap adapters. They may not be the best in the world but they do perform really good. For instance the 3.3 model can output up to 1 ampere and that's 3 watts. That's really really great and the heat that they give out is I mean, they get a little bit warmer, but that's not much at all. You can even find them in 5 volt versions, but also 12 volt versions. All outputting 3 watt. More than enough to power your Arduino, or your ESP, or any other smaller project. Powering Raspberry Pis, that's a no-go for those because they are too small. You need up to 10 watts to power a Raspberry Pi to in today's measurement. Of course, I have bought more Raspberry Pis and I went for the 4 gigabyte model and that's because we are going to latch around a little bit about with containers and a solar system. And as you have seen in my other video, 
I do like the PoE boards, so I bought a couple of them as well, and I have converted one of my clusters towards it. Including that, I also have a video coming up where I build a big Raspberry Pi cluster with around 20 Raspberry Pis for work. Check that out when that's out. Next part is LEDs. LEDs are very, very important. Um, I bought several more spools of LEDs. Uh, this here is the WS something something. I will link it up on the screen. I have bought the one that isn't that uh, the, the close to each other and that's because I plan to have these RGB LEDs in the stairs powering each step of course with the PIR sensors and making su sure that when you walk up and down the stairs the LEDs go on and off. This will be a really really fun project and I will post all the code Totally open source, all the links, the schematics and everything so you can build it yourself. Of course, the device will be wirelessly connected to my Node-RED server and you can control it via MQTT as well. But, what if you want to have your LEDs connected up to your Raspberry Pi? Uh, the ones here uses only data signal and they are a little bit complicated to actually work with when it comes to Raspberry Pi. And that's because of the timing. If you're going to work with the Raspberry Pi, I do, do recommend the APA 102 LEDs instead, because they use a data and a clock signal, making it possible to control it easily via the Raspberry Pi. This is also the same as the Pimoroni uses, and I highly recommend them. You will see that I use them on the Raspberry Pi cluster in the later video. Last but not least, you can never ever have enough lights, indicators, buttons, whatever. You need them for your project either to turn things on or off or just indicate that something is ongoing. First of all, I have bought several different type of buttons. Those are typical on and off with a LED indication inside, either with a small LED like that or lightening up the whole button. Those ones are 12 volt and you can use them easily with the Arduino. I also bought a couple of these push buttons that you press in and they stay and you press again and they come out. They are also of course LED indicated, really really nifty. I always choose the one that are round because then you can easily drill them with a step up drill. If you bought buy the ones that are rectangular, you will have a lot more work ahead of you. Indication is also very important. I bought tons of these rather simple LED lights. You can pick them apart and you can switch out. And inside you can see the tiny LED that is actually working with them. Uh, I like those. Uh, this case here I think is 220 volt. So I'm going to use them as an indicator light outside on the building showing the state of, for instance, my heating system. If they are charged up, need to be put in wood or in, in idle state. I do recommend to have a couple of them laying around. Smaller ones that could be on boxes are the ones here. Those are normal 20 volt lights uh, and they work really, really great as well. So guys, this video is already way, way too long. I have another box with a lot of gear and as you can see on the image here, I have a lot of stuff already on the bench, but what we need to take a look at is, for instance, the box that you can see over there, full of Sonoff gear. So I would like to thank you for watching in this video. If you haven't subscribed already, please feel free to do that. Also, don't forget to push the bell notification icon. And if you need anything of what I have here, check the links down below. If you have any questions or something that you think I should do, feel free to actually go in and comment. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you all guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye.